Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. My name is Eben. I am the sidekick of the person you normally see on this channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the RG10, everybody's favorite little pocket pistol. I'm just kidding. There is a lot of hate mail going around the internet about this gun and I'm about to tell you why. Rom Gesselshaft, I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly, but it will be the last time I actually pronounce that out. We're going to refer to it as RG from here on out is a German brand of firearms and related shooting equipment. RG is infamous for importing the cheapest, crudest revolvers possible at a super low price. In the early 1950s, RG, which was tradition, traditionally focused on the production of power tool chucks, diversified its product line and began to produce flare guns, starting pistols, and handguns. RG's product line of firearms was primar primarily established under the brand name RG. Following importation limits imposed on handguns by the 1968 Gun Control Act, RG established a factory in Miami in the 1970s under the name RG Industries. The Miami factory produced revolvers, automatic pistols, and derringers in the 22 Long Rifle, 25 ACP, 32 Smith & Wesson, and 38 special calibers. The RG-10's big brother, the RG-14, was also referred to in the 1980s, early 1980s, as the Saturday Night Special, a cheaply manufactured firearm, perceived low quality, and believed at the time to be favored by criminals. Was used in a very famous assassination attempt on the US President Ronald Reagan. Police officer Thomas DeLahanty was shot by John Hinckley Jr. in his failed assassination attempt on President Ronald Reagan. DeLahanty later sued Rom, arguing that the small inexpensive gun served no purpose except for crime, and thus that the company should be held responsible. Sounds like some of the stories we hear in the news now, of people uh, blaming firearms for their own crimes. The suit was subsequently rejected by the District Court Appeals. It has served as a case law for similar product liability cases. Now, on to the actual revolver. What is so bad about the RG-22 revolvers? Why does it have such a bad rap? Well, first off, the frames were made from very weak metal alloy, alloy called pot metal. Rom must have invested heavily in pot metal because pretty much all of their guns were made with this pot metal. Pot metal tends to fracture. The frames were not screwed in or pinned together. They were pressed together like a toy cap gun. The pins holding the internal parts would wallow out of the holes they were inserted in, causing the mechanisms to rattle around and get out of time. That means the cylinder does not correctly align with the barrel. A slight loss of timing means the lead will be shaved off the projectile as it runs through the barrel causing accuracy and keyholing issues. However, too much time lost causes frames to crack and break, and users end up getting peppered by portions of the projectile. Doesn't sound like fun to me. The weapon utilizes a loading gate and lacks any ejection rod. With the hammer down, the cylinder rotates clockwise from point of view. The barrel is about two and a half inches long on most of the models, this model included. And the gun as a whole looks like a toy cowboy gun. Rom made a variety of RG-10s, and the name stayed with them even though the design slightly changed over time. So you might see an RG-10 with slightly longer barrels, different finishes, and even ejection rods. At the range, double action was gritty, clumsy, and on such a small, uh, small frame with my big hands, it just is probably the last time I'm going to shoot it, let's be honest. Single action was smooth enough. Hopefully the above reasons have given you an idea why the RG-10 is considered as one of the worst guns ever made. Sure, the overall quality of an RG-10 is crap. We've uh, established that today. It has a track record that makes High Point look like it's developed by Mr. Browning himself. But this gun sold for $20 in the 80s, and you can probably find one now for $75, or heck, somebody might even give it to you. But uh, that low cost has provided a Second Amendment self-defense affordability to those that could not or can't afford the newest SIG or Kimber. The Second Amendment is, after all, for all Americans. Hope you enjoyed this RG10 review. If you do like uh, the channel and like what you hear here today, hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you for tuning in to Craig's Gun Channel.
Rom Gesselshaft. 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 Off right there, right? Or should I start over?